everyone. This is Conversations with Rob, now called Fire Breathing Rob. Please comment, subscribe, and also share these interviews. They're with amazing people who have done amazing things. I am grateful to have on Lauren Witzke again. She's been on the program before, and she's running for Senate in Delaware in the primaries on September 23rd, is it? September 15th. 15th. Sorry about that. Day. Yep, the latest September one in 15th. the country. Yeah. <laughs> Don't go on the 23rd. Do not. No. It's the 15th. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do not go on the... Anyways, Lauren, thanks so much for coming back on. I greatly appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me. All right, so it's we're always gonna good go... to be here. I always love being on here. It's always good to see you, Rob. <laughs> All right, thanks, Lauren. Same here. And thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule for, for coming on. Appreciate it. Always. All right, so let's talk about this. Uh, with the corona crisis going on, we hear a lot of stuff with the healthcare industry. We know in 2018, 41% of the electorate said that that was the most important issue to them was healthcare. We've heard about Obamacare from 2010, and it's still going on now. Uh, and obviously, Trump tried to pass his health care um, uh, proposal, but didn't go through because of John McCain uh, in 2017. Yes, correct. Right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was 17. Uh, so anyway, so we're going to move on and talk about that. So with the crisis going on, Lauren, I hear a lot of people saying and making the case for Medicare for all. We see all these countries all over the world uh, have Medicare for all, where if you're a citizen, you know, every country has a different aspect. Canada has some private insurance. Uh, and then obviously all these other countries have uh, different insurance plans. Um, but Oz, you know, we do have the best doctors and the best healthcare system. The problem is with the affordability aspect. And I think that's where people are going with the Medicare for all. So my question to you is in this crisis where, you know, people are, my age and your age who are you know young people in their 20s 30s even you know kids that are younger than that that don't have you know adequate good health insurance are afraid to probably go to the doctor because they're worried about you know what how much it's going to cost you know uh we hear online that it could cost up to you know for a test up to 500 dollars. now there's been talk now about it you know becoming free hopefully that bill will fully pass which is great to hear uh but the question I hear a lot of people talking about is, Lauren, is why does it take this big of a crisis where we see people going over to Canada for insulin, we uh, see senior citizens all over the country cutting their pills in half. This is a big crisis in our country. It's not a Democrat or Republican issue. Uh, so what do you say to the people that are saying, it's time for Medicare for all. It's time that I, you know, use those tax dollars are being used uh, to be, you know, make sure everybody's healthy and is able to go and see a doctor. Right. Okay. So, um, yes, healthcare, healthcare is one of the biggest issues, especially when I'm talking to voters, um, especially people our age, they can't afford it. Um, it's unaffordable right now. And as a result, we're not having babies. And that is a huge thing. That's a huge part of my platform is, um, increasing our birth rate. Uh, so there are, you know, we have the ACA. President Obama, when he was president, he wanted to be known as the healthcare president. So he yeah. launched Obamacare in the ACA. And it was just, it was rushed. It was not complete. And it's, as a result, it's a catastrophe. It's unaffordable. It's unaccessible. Um, we only have one healthcare provider, uh, one uh, insurance provider in the state of Delaware. And it's just, a, they've created, the pharmaceutical companies and these health insurance companies have created a racket uh, where it's just, we are it's unaccessible. So I understand why this call for Medicare for all is such a big thing. I understand why people are rallying around Bernie because he's offering healthcare and Medicare for all. Um, the problem with Bernie is that it comes with the package deal of socialism. Um, it's just, it, and we can't have socialism. Uh, there is no Medicare for all without socialism with Bernie Sanders. Uh, however, I do, I mean, uh, I'm not opposed to Medicare for all if we had a way to pay for it. Um, also, the problem with also with Medicare for all is that people, senior citizens who currently um, are on Medicare, uh, they will lose their benefits as in they will lose the um, installations uh, for the um, their medical equipment that they get with their senior citizen um, 
ac accessible healthcare. And then they also will lose like shuttle services and stuff like that. Um, so it's going to be, it's something that healthcare needs to be addressed. People, politicians need to start talking about it. They have to start talking about it because they're losing the younger generation because it's just an unachievable goal for us and we need health care especially if we want to get married have children and raise families um so it's certainly something that needs to be um you know we do have the affordable care act we could work with that and build on that um i would like to bring back free market health care i think that it should be more competitive i'd like to see um, us be able to purchase insurance just like we would car insurance or you know um picking a plan online uh, that would make it competitive, that would give us options. We shouldn't just be limited to certain options. I think that we have a right to uh, have a free market of healthcare options for us to purchase from. I do agree with you on Obamacare. I think it was a giveaway to the health insurance industry. Uh, you know, Obamacare was a heritage uh, action plan. That was uh, brought up by Mitt Romney in Massachusetts. He passed it in Massachusetts. So. Uh, I do agree with you with President Obama saying he was so great on health care, we could have just put Mitt Romney in and did pretty much the same thing. Uh, right. So, <laughs> so uh, I mean, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, so I don't understand what the big difference is. Um, but as far as uh, the Medicare for all, we need to figure out how to uh, some way get something like that done because as you spoke about, it is a disaster with young people. Uh, and I worry about how, you know, what happens to them when they get older. Uh, we also look at stuff in Medicare, too, that's not covered for senior citizens, such as dental insurance, uh, hearing aids, and stuff like that. That's not covered. We need to get that covered also uh, for senior citizens. Um, right, but, yeah. Yeah, so that needs to get sorted out. But, Lauren, what would you say in the last question on Medicare for all, uh, when we hear people like senior citizens say, I love my Medicare, uh, and then you've got somebody that's our age say, well, why can't we have it also? Right. Um, you know, I, I don't have the answer to that question because mm -hmm. I think that the healthcare system is so currently flawed uh, that yeah. I don't have an answer to tell them this is why you don't deserve healthcare or this is why you reasonably cannot afford it and uh, you have to wait till you're 65 to get adequate healthcare. No, I don't. I don't have the answer for that. However, um, right. you know, I think that there is a lot of misspending. We were, you were talking earlier about the regime change wars. We spent trillions and trillions yeah. of dollars. You know, we may be able to actually afford reasonable healthcare access for the younger generation if we would stop with these wars, which is a war we don't want. Like, we never signed up for this. Um, and it's just, you know, this is not something we advocated for ever, you know, when we were younger, especially in high school. I know uh, during 9-11, I think it was, I don't know, I was in eighth grade, you know, yeah. and all this started. And you know, we're still paying for that. So I don't have answers for them on that. But however, it is something that I will fight for them when I get into the Senate, um, knowing that, okay, this is something that we have to address. We have to make this accessible, um, especially for my generation and the younger generation. Um, it's just, it is a must have. Thank you. Thank you for, first of all, coming out and saying that you don't know all the answers because most politicians just make up some BS <laughs> and just go around it. And for somebody to say that, I appreciate that because that's coming off as honesty, not BS. So thank you for that. Um, I do want to go back into socialism because we talked a little bit about that in the last answer. Um, and this is another thing that a lot of people told me to ask you as far as the pushback. Uh, so, you know, a lot of people say that I've talked to uh, about socialism in the country. Uh, I think where Bernie Sanders made the biggest mistake is coming out and saying, democratic socialists because people do as you said think about uh cuba and uh, other countries that have socialist regimes uh people a lot of people confuse socialism with communism which is in china so but that the thing where bernie should have came out and said that he's an fdi democrat not uh, a, a democratic socialist as far as that goes um so and i, I blame that on him but to go into socialism uh how can we say that we're not a socialist country already when we have, you know, we pay our taxes, uh, fire department uh, is a socialism, socialist program because we all pay into it. Uh, the fire department is not like, it's not like a private entity, which it goes to somebody that pays more as far as healthcare, stuff like that. 
if you get where I'm saying with that, I'm going with that too. Police too. So we do have socialist programs, social security, we could say that's a socialist co program, Medicare. Um, so the people that are saying about socialism, we do have an aspect of capitalism and socialism in this country. Do you agree with that? Um, you know, that's a really good point. That's a really good point. You know, we do pay a lot of taxpayer money and a lot of our money is going to illegals that we're allowing to come here. We're putting mm -hmm. up illegals and housing uh, people that should never be here. Uh, so mm -hmm. there are, yeah, there are things where our taxpayer dollars are being taken and put towards things that we never agreed to, especially yeah. funding for Planned Parenthood. We didn't, you know, mm -hmm. we don't want our taxpayer money going towards that. However, the government is taking our taxpayer money and putting it towards things that, you know, are flawed absolutely right. flawed uh so you know i yeah i'm a, yeah a free market capitalist you know all that but mm -hmm. i also you know i you know i i can't disagree you know there are aspects to our economy that are flawed i have to agree with you uh let me let me just jive this home with this um we hear mitt romney and tulsi gabbard who i actually like because i you know i believe she's against as we talked about the, the militarism and the wars and getting out of these places. President Trump's even uh, praised Tulsi Gabbard quite a few times. Even when President Trump uh, took office, he brought her in there to talk about uh, military issues and she's a, a right. veteran and uh, a still serving, I should say. Um, so she and Andrew Yang's talked about this too, who is a sellout right now to Joe Biden, but that's besides the point. Uh, he brought up throughout his campaign and Mitt Romney and Tulsi Gabbard just put out a bill for $1,000 a month for as the UBI, uh, especially with this crisis where, you know, as Steve Mnuchin said, the Treasury Secretary, we could go up to 20% unemployment. Uh, people like me are, you know, been sitting at home for almost like a week, almost two weeks now. I have no, no right. income coming in. Uh, and you as being on the campaign trail, uh, seeing this from a lot of different Americans from all those different stripes. Um, so would you agree with Mitt Romney and also Tulsi Gabbard if, if you get to the Senate uh, to pass a bill like that, you know, in this type of crisis for $1,000 a month? So people that are like me and people, other Delawareans that are out of work, whether they work in the service industry or they work in an office in general, uh, they can kind of at least have some sort of income coming in to make ends meet. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I definitely would support that. I think that um, we have to support specifically our American workers right now first. Um, this money doesn't need to be going to these big corporate globalist um, uh, companies right now. The w American worker is suffering and we need to take care of them. However, it is also important that we get you back to work too because yes. um, we have to keep these businesses open. Yes, yeah, so we have jobs to go back to. I never thought I'd live in a world where I can't even go out and get a waitressing job right now to make ends meet. Yeah. You know, it's just not work. You know, it, who saw this coming? Nobody saw this coming. So it's really important to keep these businesses open and get people back to work um, when people aren't working. You know, it gives you a sense of pride, too, when you have a hard day's work. Um, it's not just collecting a check. You know, right now, yeah, it's survivable. You're going to have to. Yeah. Um, and I support that entirely. Um, I think it's funny because I, I heard Andrew Yang is helping with the uh, $1,000 no. a month UBI. Yeah. yeah, and that was his whole thing he campaigned on. Yeah. Um, so, and there's a lot of things that I can work with Tulsi Gabbard on, especially with the uh, her foreign policy. She and I, I a lot of my foreign policy is right in alignment with her. So there's a lot of things that I could work with these Democrats on and rhinos and Republicans uh, to put the American people and the American workers and in every aspect first. So the Tea Party ran on this in 2009, 2010, and you know, there's still some Tea Party is in Congress about, uh, we, as we talked about with the socialism and you know, bailing out country, uh, ba bailing out countries, bailing out companies, uh, as what happened with the uh, automobile industry in 2009-2010. Joe Biden was involved in that, as was Barack Obama. A lot of Tea Party's uh, candidates won on that in 2010. We saw in your state, uh, she didn't win, but she won the primary against um, Congressman, gosh, his name escapes, it escapes mm, me. Mike Castle. Mike, Mike Castle, Castle, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
uh, the woman, I forgot her name. She beat Mike Christine Cassidy. O'Donnell. Christine yep. O'Donnell. I hear that all Thank the time. You. Yeah. Everybody asks me all the time how I'm different from Christine O'Donnell. And I'm like, I mean, look at my like, platform. It's very I different. Think, <laughs> I think you're a lot younger than Christine O'Donnell was when she yes. ran. <laughs> yeah, true. True, true. <laughs> but uh, to go back into this, um, you know, the airline companies are one of the industries through this crisis and the travel industry is suffering immensely through this coronavirus, uh, and they want to be bailed out. We saw this, as I said, in the, with the car industry in 2009, 2010, and the 2008 crisis. Uh, as far as the bailouts go, Democrats and some, Repu uh, some Democrats and Republicans were against the bailout. Uh, in fact, the first vote in that didn't pass. It had to come to a second vote uh, to, right. to pass. Uh, don't you think bailing out these co uh, companies such as the airline industry is a socialist program because we're bailing them out as the Tea Party yeah, said. I, in I do not. Yeah, you know? I do not support bailing out, especially these globalist um, companies like these airline companies. We mm -hmm. have got to put like I am like there's such an urgency to this that we have to take care of our everyday average American workers. Um, mm -hmm not trying to bail out these big globalist companies um, that we cannot like this is this is a crisis like it really is like our economy is going is facing some one of the biggest things that has it has faced since 9-11 right. um, and we have got to I thought I thought it was great that they were acting quickly to provide these stimulus packages for us you know I thought that was awesome that they were doing it for people like you who are stuck at home and unable to work um, so I do not support these big company bailouts right now. Um, but however, I do think that we need to keep our businesses open. Um, so, mm -hmm. uh, you know, but like where I'm talking about the airlines, specifically the airline companies, um, not businesses, but the airline companies because, you know, they're globalists. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and just to hop on what you're saying and to end this subject, uh, I was looking at uh, The Economist and it says that the airline companies uh, they use 90% of their cash on the buybacks uh, over the last 10 years. So they didn't put that money, as you said, what you would do, back to the American worker. They were just buying back their own stock and making money off that. Um, so, right. yeah. And, and that's a problem in this country as far as, you know, you know, making money. And, you know, they could be raising wages for regular working people, but instead they're just putting their money back in. I want to get back into your campaign right now. Uh, before, you know, basically came to somewhat of a stop with the coronavirus, uh, what, what are you seeing on the ground and hearing from people as far as, you know, your primary goes, even the Democratic primary with Jess Serene and, and Chris Coons going? Uh, what, what is your take on all this and what are you hearing from people? Um, so I think Jess Serene's going to beat Chris Coons. I think she's going to knock him out. I'm going to really? be honest. Because oh, so. she is, she has that AOC effect. She's she's out there knocking doors. Um, she's out there talking to the people. Oh, it's freezing. Sorry. Can you hear me? No, I got you. We're good. Okay. Okay. So um, so she is. You know, she's kind of a. She's very similar to Bernie Sanders. And what makes Bernie Sanders appealing? Medicare for all. Um, mm -hmm. you know, health accessible health care for young people and student loan debt. You know, that is something that she's addressing real issues that people are struggling with, and she's talking about them. And I think that is why she is going to beat Chris Coons in the primary. Um, you know, so there are things that, you know, we kind of overlap where we went, we're populists, we both are. Um, yeah. But that, that's what separates us from being the establishment. And yeah. we care about the people. You know, you can't deny the fact that it seems that she actually cares. Chris Coons is inaccessible. He has spent the last three years trying to impeach our president instead of trying to work, yeah. whether you like him or not, you could yeah. have worked with him to help us. You know, we have a huge opioid crisis. Our GDP was zero and it's progressively going to get worse, but he's just spent all his time finding a CNN camera to get in front of yeah. and trying to impeach our president. And it's like, come on, man, do your job. So I think that is definitely going to have an, a, a, serious impact on his campaign this year people know that people if you look at his facebook page people are commenting they're like dude go to work like what did we hire what did we vote for you for <laughs> like what are you doing <laughs> and so i think people are starting to take notice yeah for sure so i think that he's gonna i don't think he's gonna make it through his primary and um, i think it's gonna be a really interesting and very good race this year 
Well, I hope you're right because it would be nice to see two women that are intelligent go at each other. I mean, Chris Rooms is as dull as a box of rocks. And second of all, like you said, he always goes on, <laughs> he always goes on CNN and he just uh, repeats the Democratic established talking points. The problem with the Democratic establishment and even the Republican establishment is they don't understand that the people don't want establishment politics anymore. Right. They, want, they want regular working people that are going to go out and not take money from big corporations and go out there and fight for them, whether they're on the conservative or the um, progressive side. So uh, that's the problem with that. So I hope it does get to you know both of you guys because I interviewed Jess too and she seemed, like you said, whether you would like her politics or not, she's sincere and she yeah. is really truthful. Whereas, you know, Chris Coons, I've never interviewed him and I doubt that he would ever come on something like this. <laughs> um, no. You know, he's, but I've seen yeah. him on TV and he's dull as a box of rocks. So enough said with that. And, and you are very truthful and caring and you know what's going on in, in Delaware and also in America. So like I said, we need people like you and Jess um, in, in big positions. I want to get to, um, as far as the electorate goes, uh, do you feel like the coronavirus is hurting, you know, campaigns that are upstart like yours and Jess Serange? You guys are, you know, maybe you're on fire knocking on doors, going out all the time, but, you know, for people that are trying to beat establishment candidates, it's not, maybe not so much your, but even it does affect you because, if, you know, yeah. getting to the general election, you have to go up against him and this is time wasted right now where you can't, you know, effectively get out your message as much as you want to. So how do you feel like, you know, you're going to kind of do that? Would you, are you doing like digital town halls or how's that, how's that work? Right. So, so we have had to shift our entire campaign strategy. The good thing about us young people is that we're pretty good with the internet. So that is where we will be able to pull forward. I think that if we use, utilize the internet correctly, I mean, social media, that's what it's for. If people aren't working, people are home and they're looking for content to watch. So let's give it to them. Let's give them conversations that need to be had. Let's have right. these talks. Um, and uh, they're trying to push like the whole globalist Netflix, oh, get binge watch that trash on Netflix. No, like let's get in front of these people. And this is opportunity, opportunity for us to pull ahead in this. Um, so I will be fully taking advantage of that. And, you know, I want to be accessible to the, my voters. I want to be accessible to my constituents. And that is something that Chris Coons um, progressively lacks. He, like he just is inaccessible to the people. Um, we can't ask him questions. There's no concerns. They don't care. You call their office. I, they were really rude to somebody that called in the office about the S386 bill that Chris Coons co-sponsored. Um, so it's just, you know, that's what is going to set us apart is accessibility. And uh, going fully online for now, yes, door knocking hurts, like not being able to door knock because voter contact wins elections. But this is 2020 politics, so we're just going to have to shake it up. It's going to be one heck of a year, Rob. It really is. <laughs> I hope so. I, I'm... Yeah. I'm you know, uh, and this goes on to, uh, we keep talking about establishment politics. Lauren Witzke, laurenwitzke.com, W-I-T-Z-K-E.com. Yep. All right, yeah, the sign well, behind you. All right. Yeah. Nice yeah. advertisement for you. Uh, <laughs> here on Fire Breathing Rob. Uh, to keep going into this establishment stuff, we, we're seeing this right now in the Democratic Party with Joe Biden um, and uh, Bernie Sanders. Uh, do you worry about that, running against uh, an establishment? Like Chris Coons is going to be on the news, getting all that media time. We're seeing that with Joe Biden. He's the candidate they want to run against Trump. And we're going to go into that in just a second of how, uh, what a disaster that's going to be for the Democrats. Um, but as far as you getting not, are you getting, you feel like you're getting enough time and publicity right now from the mainstream media in Delaware, Philadelphia, that area? Um, so I'm trying to get on every conservative network I can. Um, so I'm also going to be trying to seek out national options as well. Um, I will be fighting really hard for airtime everywhere I can. I'll be scrapping for it. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that's going to be, that's going to make or break me is access to um, media right now right. for sure. Uh, however, I'll be good at putting out my own content as well. Uh, and um, yeah, it's just, it's, nobody saw this coming. We really yeah. didn't. This kind of came out of nowhere. China lied about it, didn't tell us exactly what was going on. Yeah. So here we are on basically lockdown here in, in our homes. So it's going to have, take some adjustments, but um, you know, I'm a fighter. So I'll keep coming back, keep coming back until it works. <laughs> do, you, do you think that to move into the 2020 election part of this, 
Uh, do you think that Joe Biden is going to lock on Delaware? Obviously, the hometown senator, but President Trump, you know, is uh, is probably going to win Sussex County pretty big. Uh, I don't know about the other areas. You're on the ground there. You would know what's going on better than I would. Uh, so what do you think about Trump's chances of winning, you know, a very Democrat state, blue state as such as Delaware? Well, um, the good thing about Trump is that he's a populist as well. Um, mm -hmm. He runs on a socially conservative pro-worker platform. Uh, the workers here, you know, I've talked to a lot of Democrats, especially ones in Newcastle County. And they're like, you know, I'm a registered Democrat, but I will never vote Democrat again, especially like after the impeachment hearings and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That is something we need to remind these people that these Democrats tried to impeach our president, that we fairly elected him into office. We chose him. And the Democrats spent all their time the last three years trying to remove him from office mm -hmm. as the economy was getting better. Um, this whole coronavirus is going to affect the economy. I hope it doesn't affect the working class vote uh, support for President Trump. But I think, you know, I think that we're smarter than what you, would, you know, we see a lot more. Uh, we saw, you know, the economy getting better. There was more work. Unemployment was going down when President Trump took office. Um, and just the masquerade of, just scandal that they were trying to throw at our president it was just it got ridiculous you know they weren't the politicians weren't working for us um and the good news is chris coons endorsed joe biden so everything joe biden yeah. does chris coons signed off on so i'm definitely going to be using that Agreed. and the th do you think that joe Biden? i mean joe Biden, chris uh <laughs> donald <laughs> trump has a chance of winning delaware though i think so i think this is our year this year is our year um for sure, especially if Bernie is the nominee. And that well, would be very well, interesting. Well, let me t say what, and, and I want you to go off on this with, uh, we, you know, pretty much the Democratic establishment has really stabbed Bernie in the heart. Uh, so has Elizabeth Warren. So it looks like Joe Biden pretty much has a lock on the nominee. Uh, and this is what I want to ask you if you believe and agree with this. I believe Joe Biden. Bernie's a better nominee for the Democrats against Trump. But let me tell you why and see if you agree with this. Joe Biden is fumbling, stumbling over words. He can say that he has a stutter, but we all know that he's something's wrong. Yeah. There. I'm not trying to be mean or disrespectful because I don't want to call somebody that's elderly. No, it's true. Yeah, that has some sort of right, right. cognitive no, issues. It's very true. Yeah. The Democrat Party is trying to sell us a broken product, and they know it. His cognitive decline is very obvious, um, and I don't think voters in good conscience can go out and vote for a man that we know. Oh, no. Okay, there you are. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah I got you. Okay, that we cannot go out and vote for, they can, voters cannot go out and vote for a man that they know is borderline yeah. cognitive, just you know, he's incapacitated. It is very obvious. Um, he did really well during his debate the other day against Bernie. I'm not really sure if they gave him some coffee and like, you know, and also this coronavirus is going to be really good for him. Yeah. Medication, you know, 